Good Saturday morning. I hope your day has started off well. I'm glad we can be together and I've got a few books I want to read. It won't take very long. I hope we can have a good time together as we read these. The first book I want to read today is one called Peter's Sailboat. And if you've never read this book or heard about it, I think you're really going to enjoy it. All right, it has some good pictures and has a really good message. And then I'm going to read a couple of books uh, that are about the Bible. And so you be thinking about maybe what stories from the Bible I might have in mind as we're reading this book together, okay? Peter's Sailboat. Whenever Peter went along to Mr. Greenleaf's store, he liked to look at all the toys lined up inside the door. Of all the toys he liked the best, a blue and yellow boat. I wish it were my very own so I could watch it float. Why don't I try? I think I could, he thought on one happy day. I'll run right now to Father's shop and ask him if I may. Down on the bottom of the pile, they found a piece just right. But oh, how rough the edges were. I'll sand with all my might. He sanded, sanded back and forth until his arms were sore. But shall I stop before I'm done? No, I will sand some more. All smooth at last. Now for some paint. What colors shall I choose? The blue and yellow, to be sure, are just what I will use. The next day, when the paint was dry, he carved a little P right on the bottom. Then I'll know that you belong to me. Come, brother, sister, Peter called. I'm done with my new boat. Let's take it to the pasture stream to see if it will float. It's not quite like the little boat in Mr. Greenleaf's store, but since I worked so hard, I think I like it even more. As yellow as the yellow sun, as blue as is the sky, oh, how the children laugh to see the boat go sailing by. Through summer days, when chores were done, they played beside the stream. They played, they played that they were catching fish. The days were short, it seemed. One evening, Peter tied his boat fast to a little tree. Like fishermen tie boats at docks. That's what I'll do, you see. Alas, that night, a strong wind blew. The water dashed and tossed. It tore the string and washed the boat away, away, and lost. A splish, a splash. When Peter woke, he heard the raindrops sing. He thought about the little boat. Oh, I must bring it in. He ran as fast as he could go, straight to the little tree. His eyes grew wide. A piece of string was all that he could see. Dear God, who made the wind and rain, you saw it sail away. Oh, please, look down and help me find the boat I lost today. Among these sticks, behind that rock, or under this big tree, somewhere among the cattails tall, my boat, where could it be? One tear, then two slipped down his cheeks, and it joined the drops of rain. I wonder if I'll ever see my little boat again. He watched the summer flowers fade, the leaves turned red and gold, Large flocks of honking geese flew south before the days grew cold. One bright blue day, he went again to Mr. Greenleaf's store. He looked at all the toys as he had often done before. 
I wish I had my little boat, he whispered to himself. And then his eyes got big and round, for there upon a shelf, back in the corner, could it be his blue and yellow boat? Was it the one that he had made? The one that he watched float? I'll check the bottom, then I'll know if it belongs to me. With trembling hands, he picked it up and found a little pea. He dashed to his mother dear, my boat, I found my boat. Please, mother, may I have four dimes? Then I can watch it float. Quite soon, the purchase had been made. How Peter beamed with joy. I made you, then I bought you back, my blue and yellow toy. I made you, I bought you back. Oh, thank you, God, for, for giving back my little boat today. I know you care for boys and girls and hear them when they pray. Peter's sailboat. The one with a little P that he worked so hard on and made just the way that he wanted it. Now, last week we looked in Luke chapter 15 at the story of the lost son. You remember the prodigal son? Well, today I want to go back to Luke chapter 15 because Jesus actually tells three stories in that great chapter. And today I want to look at the other two because they remind me of this little story we just read about Peter's sailboat. The first parable, the heavenly story, or the story with a heavenly meaning, is one about the shepherd who had a hundred sheep. You remember what happened in that story? Well, you can read about it in Luke chapter 15, but here's a book that kind of has some pictures, and it gives a summary of what happened in that story that Jesus told that day about the hundred sheep. This is the story that Jesus told the people. At the end of each day, the shepherd counted the sheep in his flock. There were 100 sheep in the flock. And one day, one was missing. What could have happened to the missing sheep? It must have wandered away during the day. It would have to be found. The shepherd asked a friend to look after his flock, and then he set out to find the lost sheep. Did one sheep out of a hundred really matter all that much? Well, to the shepherd, it meant very much. The 99 sheep were safe in their meadow. The lost sheep might be in danger. There were always wolves waiting to attack sheep. The shepherd was very worried. It was important that the lost sheep be found as soon as possible. The shepherd made his way back to the field where the sheep had been all day. There was no sign of it. He called out to the sheep. All his sheep knew his voice. The missing sheep did not come running toward him. He set off to look for the sheep. He walked for miles across the rocky desert. It was not safe for a man to be alone in the desert. That was where many wild animals roamed. Hungry wolves would attack a man just as quickly as they would attack a sheep. Bravely, the shepherd went on searching. Night had fallen by the time he found his missing sheep. Luckily, it was not hurt. It was just tired and shivering from the cold. The shepherd was tired too. However, he picked up the heavy animal. He carried it on his shoulders and set off for home. All through the night, he carried the sheep. He arrived back safely. He was so happy. His friends welcomed him back. See? I have found my missing sheep, the shepherd called out. Then the shepherd decided to hold a feast. Let us share our joy, he said. My lost sheep is found again. Everyone agreed. As Jesus ended his story, he smiled at the people listening to him. The shepherd was happy because he found his sheep, he said. Then Jesus explained, so God, our shepherd, is happy when someone who has been lost to him starts to believe in him. 
Now the people understood why gentle Jesus spoke to everyone, no matter who that person was. That's the story of, of the lost sheep. How many sheep did Jesus have? Say that the, the shepherd had? He had a hundred. And how many got lost? Only one. Well, how concerned was the shepherd about that lost sheep? So concerned he left the 99 and he went to find the one. How concerned was Peter that he lost his sailboat? Well, you can hear his sadness, can't you? That's how God feels whenever one sinner leaves and goes away from him. God doesn't want to lose anybody. He wants everybody to come back and to be right with him. Now, there's one more short story that Jesus gives in Luke chapter 15. And I bet you know this one, don't you? It's the story about the lost coin. Now, let's read this one quickly together, and then we'll be, you can get about your day. Are you ready? The lost coin. Jesus traveled from town to town, and everywhere he walked, crowds would gather and follow him to listen as he talked. The crowds were full of people who loved Jesus very much. They ate with him and talked with him and were blessed by his words of touch. But not everyone who followed the Lord was happy with what they heard. They muttered and complained behind his back, and Jesus heard every word. The teachers and the Pharisees thought Jesus had made a mistake because he ate with those who sinned and collectors with taxes to take. But Jesus knew these Pharisees did not know why he came. So Jesus told this parable, his gospel to explain. Suppose there was a woman who, our Savior began to say, had saved ten silver drachmas, coins, each one worth one day's pay. They're valuable, aren't they? But then one day, to her surprise, the woman had quite a shock. One of her coins had disappeared. Now where could it have dropped? The woman's house was very dark, no windows in any wall. The floor was earthen, made of dirt, so the color was rather dull. How could she find just one small coin on a floor made out of dirt? She lit her lamp, then took her broom and swept to begin her search. She w swept the, with the broom across the floor and listened for any sound. And suddenly she heard the clink of her coin there on the ground. Oh, what joy the woman felt to have the coin again. I'll celebrate, the woman thought, and invite my neighbors and friends. Rejoice with me, the woman said to everyone she knew. The coin I lost has now been found. I'll share my joy with you. Now, you might think it's rather strange to party for a coin, but for this woman, it was worth a treasure chest of joy. Then Jesus told the gathered crowd just what his parable meant. The angels of God will always rejoice whenever a sinner repents. And surely... That party up in heaven is filled with joyful sounds since Jesus came to seek the lost wherever we all are found. Yes, we were the lost that Jesus found. He's claimed us as his own and rejoices over each one of us before his Father's throne. Peter made the sailboat. He spent time and he crafted it and made it just the way he wanted it. And then he lost it. And he had to go back to the store and buy it again. Now, can I ask you, who made you? And the answer is God made you, didn't he? And God sees your value. God loves you very much. And he wants nothing more than to be with you forever in heaven. Well, there may come a time in your life when, when you might choose to sin and, and do those things that are wrong in his sight. Jesus bought you back. He, he paid the price for our sin, didn't he? He went to the cross and he shed his blood. Because he understands how valuable you are. And whenever one sinner chooses to repent, well, it's just like the shepherd who called his friends. It's just like the lady who called all of her friends and neighbors. And what did they do? They rejoiced. They were full of joy. Just like Peter when he found his sailboat. They were full of joy. 
And that's exactly how God feels about us. All he wants to do is to, to be with us in heaven forever. And that's all we want to do. We love you. We're thankful that we could have this time together today. I hope you enjoy your day. And remember, God loves you. He understands how valuable you are. And he just wants you to go to heaven to be with him. And so do we. Have a great day.